Hello friends, I'm your maths faculty from QLS Academy. Today we are going to start a really interesting topic called statistics. Now I'm sure you all must have heard about it. You hear it all the time. So let us dive right into the video and learn how this very important mathematical tool is used. I hope you'll have fun learning. Now in your previous class you have studied the classification of given data into ungrouped as well as grouped frequency distributions. You have also learned to represent the data grouped or ungrouped pictorially in the form of various graphs such as bar graph, histogram, including those of various widths and frequency polygons. In fact, you went a step further by studying certain numerical representatives of the ungrouped data, also called measures of central tendency, namely mean, median and mode. I am sure these terms must be sounding unfamiliar to some of you since we don't pay much attention in class. So let us recall. First of all, what did I mean when I was talking about classification of given data into ungrouped as well as grouped frequency distributions? What are grouped and ungrouped frequency distributions? For this, you must first understand what is ungrouped data and grouped data. So first, let's talk about ungrouped data and its frequency distribution and understand it with the help of an example. So we will be doing frequency distribution of ungrouped data using tally marks. So we are given marks obtained by 20 students in a math test out of a total of 25 marks. So as you can see in the table, we have written the individual marks obtained by students and then we have written how many students scored that much marks. For example, one student scored 12 marks, two students scored 15 marks, three students scored 17 marks and so on. And also, we have respective tally marks. Bhi likhe now here you can see that individual marks obtained likhe hain humne first column mein. So yaha humara data ungrouped hai. It is kind of scattered. Now let us talk about the frequency distribution of grouped data. The presentation of the data from the math test case can also be expressed into groups. These groups are called classes or class intervals. Each class interval is bounded by two figures called the class limits. Now, the lower value of a class interval is called lower limit and upper value of that class interval is called the upper limit. Thus, each class interval has lower and upper limits. For example, in the class interval 10 to 20, 10 is the lower limit and 20 is the upper limit. Now, one more thing is that this table is expressed in the exclusive form, which means that in this, the class intervals are 0 to 20, 10 to 20, 20 to 30. In this, we include lower limit but exclude upper limit. So, 10 to 20 means values from 10 and more but less than 20. 20 to 30 would mean values from 20 and more but less than 30. Now, let's talk about group data in the inclusive form. Again, marks obtained by 20 students of a class are given in a math test. Here also we arrange the data into different groups called class intervals that is 0 to 10, 11 to 20 and 21 to 30. Now in this case, since this is the inclusive form, 0 to 10 means between 0 and 10 including 0 and 10. Here 0 is the lower limit and 10 is the upper limit. 11 to 20 means between 11 and 20 including 11 and 20. Here 11 is the lower limit and 20 is the upper limit. When the data is expressed in the inclusive form, it is converted to exclusive form by subtracting 0.5 from lower limit and adding that 0.5 to upper limit of each class interval. So, 11 to 20 is expressed in the inclusive form, which can be changed and taken as 10.5 to 20.5, which is the exclusive form of the data. Similarly, 21 to 30 can be taken as 20.5 to 30.5. Now, the difference between the true upper limit and the true lower limit of a class interval is called the class size. Class size remains the same for all class intervals. For example, for the class interval 15 to 25, class size is 10, that is 25 minus 15 which is equal to 10. Now, mid value of each class interval is called its class mark. So, class mark is equal to half of upper limit plus lower limit. For the class interval 10 to 20, class mark is equal to 10 plus 20 divided by 2, which is equal to 30 by 2, that is 15. The difference between the maximum value and the minimum value of the observation is called the range. 
if the maximum value is 24 and the minimum value is 0, then range will be equal to 24 minus 0, that is 24. Matlab hamara data kaha se leke kaha tak hai. So this was the frequency distribution of ungrouped data and grouped data. Now let us talk about various graphs such as bar graphs, histograms and frequency polygons. Frequency polygons are analogous to line graphs and just as line graphs make continuous data visually easy to interpret, so do frequency polygons. To construct a frequency polygon, first examine the data and decide on the number of intervals or class intervals to use on the x-axis and y-axis. After choosing the appropriate ranges, begin plotting the data points. After all the points are plotted, draw line segments to connect them. Now talking about the histogram. A histogram consists of contiguous or adjoining boxes. It has both a horizontal axis and a vertical axis. The horizontal axis is labelled with what the data represents. For instance, distance from your home to your school. The vertical axis is labelled with either frequency or relative frequency. Or it can also be percent frequency or probability. The graph will have the same shape with either label. The histogram can give you the shape of the data, the center and the spread of the data as well. Now the relative frequency is equal to frequency for an observed value of the data divided by the total number of data values in the sample. Remember that frequency is defined as the number of times something occurs. A bar graph, also called bar chart, is a graphical display of data using bars of different heights. We can use bar graphs to show the relative sizes of many things, such as what type of car people have, how many customers a shop has on different days and so on. Now we'll be talking about measures of central tendency namely mean, median and mode. The mean or average of observations as we know is the sum of the values of all the observations divided by the total number of observations. Recall that if x1, x2, x3 and so on to xn are observations with respective frequencies f1, f2, f3 and so on to fn, then this means that observation x1 occurs f1 times, x2 occurs f2 times and so on. Now the sum of the values of all the observations will be equal to f1 into x1 plus f2 into x2 plus f3 into x3 and so on up to fn into xn and the number of observations will be equal to f1 plus f2 plus f3 up to fn. So the mean, so the mean x bar of the given data is given by x bar equal to f1 x1 plus f2 x2 plus f3 x3 up to fn xn divided by f1 plus f2 plus f3 up to fn. We can write this in short form by using the Greek letter sigma which means summation. So x bar is equal to, so x bar is equal to summation with limits i is equal to 1 to n and the summation is of fi xi divided by summation from limit i is equal to 1 to n into fi. Now the terms mean, median and mode are three kinds of averages. The mode is the number that is repeated more often than any other in the data. The median is the middle value. To find the median, your numbers have to be listed in ascending order, that is from smallest to largest. So you may have to rewrite your list before you can find the median. Median is basically the middle value in case of odd number of data values arranged in ascending order and the average of the two middle values in case of even number of data items arranged in ascending order. Suppose we have to find the mean, median mode and range for the following list of values. We are given the values 13, 18, 13, 14, 13, 16, 14, 21, 23. The mean is the usual average. So we will add and then divide. So we add all the values and divide it by 9 since we have a total of 9 values. This gives us 15. Now I want you to note that the mean in this case isn't a value from the original list. So it can be a different value than a value from the provided data. Now talking about the median, note that the formula for the place to find the median is the number of data points given plus 1 divided by 2. Basically the median is the middle value. So first we will have to rewrite the list in numerical order. There are 9 numbers in the list. So the middle one will be 9 plus 1 divided by 2 that is 
10 divided by 2 that is the fifth number. So, the median is the fifth number that is 14. The mode is the number that is repeated more often than any other. So, 13 is the mode. The largest value in the list is 21 and the smallest is 13. So, the range will be 21 minus 13 that is equal to 8. So, this is it for this session friends. We just saw some basic stuff related with our topic statistics. We learned about ungrouped and grouped frequency distributions, various graphs such as bar graphs, histograms and frequency polygons, measures of central tendency namely mean, median and mode. So I hope you had fun learning. For any queries information you may visit the link following the video. Thank you.